So when one talks about salt, one usually associates salt intake with high blood pressure. And not many realize that high salt intake has multiple other effects also. In fact, I also did not know. Thank you, R.C., for asking me to talk on this subject. <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you today is how high salt intake affects us in different ways. One is, as we all know, by causing high blood pressure, it affects in different ways, and that has been discussed. It can also increase the risk of obesity. And we know that obesity is an important risk factor for health. It has an impact on calcium metabolism, whereby it increases the urinary calcium excretion. It has an impact on the stomach, and it has an effect on our immune system. So we know how hypertension, which is the main side effect of high salt intake, causes stroke, loss of vision, heart failure, acute heart attack, kidney disease. All this is known. And there is a direct relationship between the degree of hypertension and its effect on cardiovascular disease. So heart attack risk is significantly increased with increasing blood pressure. In the same way, the risk of cerebrovascular accident is significantly increased, and the risk of kidney disease also increases with increasing blood pressure. And high blood pressure can sometimes get accelerated, become malignant, and it can lead to acute hypertensive crisis, which can manifest as acute stroke, visual impairment due to papillary edema, acute left ventricular failure and pulmonary edema, and acute kidney injury. Now let's look at the other effects of salt. How does excess salt intake lead to obesity? So high salt intake activates the aldose reductase pathway in the liver, resulting in androgenous fructose production that induces leptin resistance. Leptin is supposed to be causing satiety. So when there's a resistance, it leads to increased food intake, development of metabolic syndrome and fatty liver. Thus high salt diet and essential micronutrient with no intrinsic caloric value still contributes by causing obesity and diabetes. So this was a study in United Kingdom where they looked at 458 children and 785 adults. And they found that for each gram increase in salt intake, there was an increase in risk of obesity by 28% in children and 26% in adults. So these results indicate that salt intake is a potential risk factor for obesity, independent of energy intake. This slide shows how increase in salt intake leads to increase in the body mass index, shaded in black, and an increase in waist circumference. With increasing salt intake, there is an increase in body mass index and waist circumference. How does it affect the calcium metabolism? <clears throat> there is a strong direct relationship between urinary sodium and calcium excretion. The more the salt intake, the more will be urinary sodium excretion. So that is the indirect way of assessing the salt intake of an individual. And as your salt intake increases, your urinary calcium excretion increases. And what will happen if the urinary calcium increases? There is an increased risk of forming 
calcium stones. The most common kidney stones are calcium stones. So increased salt intake by increasing urinary calcium excretion will increase the risk of forming the kidney stones. And when you lose calcium, what is going to happen? It is going to decrease the bone mineral density and it will lead to osteoporosis. There is a negative association between urinary sodium excretion and changes in the bone mineral density. So more the salt intake, as shown by increasing urinary sodium excretion, there is a decrease in bone mineral density. Again, another study changes in heap bone density with different urinary sodium excretions. And we know that osteoporosis predisposes patients to low impact fragility fractures. Osteoporotic fractures lead to significant decrease in quality of life, increased morbidity, mortality, and disability. So this is the four cornerstone hypothesis. When you take more sodium, it will cause high blood pressure on one end, but it will lead to high urinary calcium. This high urinary calcium will increase the risk of kidney stones. It will cause bone mineral loss and osteoporosis. Now what are the effects of salt on the stomach? Gastric cancer is the fifth most commonly diagnosed cancer globally. And the role of dietary salt intake in gastric cancer has been widely investigated. Some studies hypothesize its role in disrupting stomach mucosa and making it more susceptible to H. pylori colonization, which in turn increases the risk of gastric cancer. But it may also increase the risk of gastric cancer by damaging the gastric epithelium in synergy with N nitroso compounds and chemical carcinogens which may be present in the food. Adding salt to food at table, so forget uh, the regular salt that is in the food, but adding salt to the food is an indication of gastric cancer risk amongst the adults. So this study showed that when you add salt, and then they looked at how often you add it. Do you add it infrequently, you add it frequently, or you add it always, and there was a good correlation between the 24-hour urinary sodium excretion and the frequency of adding salt to the food. And in this prospective study, which included 4,71,144 people, it was observed that those who always added salt to the food had a 41% greater risk of developing gastric cancer than those who rarely added it in models adjusted for demographic, socioeconomic, and lifestyle factors, and for prevalent comorbidities. When they looked at uh, multiple populations, 39 populations from 24 countries, they found a significant and direct association between salt intake and death from stomach cancer. And now, excess salt and its effect on the immune system. A high salt intake may impair normal immune function promote inflammation, and increase susceptibility to autoimmune diseases. Endothelial dysfunction is one of the central characteristics of hypertension and is associated with overexpression of leukocyte adhesion molecules and local inflammation. The inflammatory changes are seen even before hypertension develops. So it is not that because of increased salt intake, there is hypertension, and then there is an endothelial injury. The endothelial inflammatory changes are seen even before hypertension develops. Furthermore, early development of endothelial leukocyte interaction suggests potential dangers of even short periods of high salt intake. So even binge eating 
is likely to increase the risk of endothelial injury. An increase in extracellular sodium is also associated with stimulation of coagulation system with increased risk of thrombosis. So inflammation, thrombosis increases in general the risk of cardiovascular disease. Recent studies suggest that salt may directly influence the release of inflammatory cytokines and we learned during COVID time, everyone used to look at interleukin-6, it is one of the most consistently elevated inflammatory cytokine. High salt diet can directly affect the immune cells, resulting in a pro-inflammatory response. The best recognized is salt-induced IL-23 dependent polarization of CD4 positive T cells to T helper 17 phenotype. And this increases the risk of autoimmunity. Salt also modulates mononuclear phagocyte system resulting in promotion of inflammation. It acts on the T cells, it acts on the mononuclear phagocytic system, and it directly activates the dendritic cells which promote T cell production of IL-17A and interferon gamma. So what it does is that it favors an inflammatory response as against a regulatory response. So excess salt intake modulates the T cell activity in favor of T helper cell generating TH17 and M1 macrophages and an increase in this compared to regulatory T cells and M2 macrophages leads to systemic inflammation and autoimmune response. So in summary, high salt intake increases risk of cardiovascular disease directly and through hypertension. Not just because of hypertension, but it directly can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. It is associated with greater risk of developing obesity and diabetes, which in turn has its own implications. It increases urinary calcium excretion with higher risk of kidney stones and bone demineralization. High salt intake is associated with increased risk of gastric cancer and it modulates immune system, resulting in systemic inflammation and autoimmunity. What should we do to cut down our daily salt intake? It's a repetition of what the previous speakers have said but it's something which is important for us to be able to control it. We should not add salt in rice and dough for chapati, puri or paratha. We should not sprinkle salt on salad, cut fruits, cooked vegetables or curd. Enjoy the natural taste. It's a matter of developing the taste as we were told. Gradually reduce the salt use while cooking from laser to list. Limit food accompaniments like salted butter, salty spice mixes like chaat masala, chutneys, pickles, papads, ketchup, sauces and dressings as they all contain excess salt. Baking soda, baking powder, monosodium glutamate all contain high sodium. Avoid using this in our daily cooking. But restricting salt intake is a challenge. So let's move from little serious atmosphere to a little humorous atmosphere. While I was preparing this talk, my neighbor came and said, I'm celebrating my birthday and I have this special salted, I, I don't think you can appreciate the nuts, the salted nuts, highly salted. And I, on one hand, I was preparing this talk on salt reduction, and on the other hand, he was gifting me with this highly salted nuts, which I could not restrict. I went, I came to this hotel last night. The flight was late. We didn't have dinner, but I said, it's okay, once in a while. 
let's see what is there in the hotel. And all it had was snacks in the form of salted cocktail nuts, almonds, cashews. Again, I was tempted. But then I saw it was not complimentary. <laughs> so I controlled my temptation. But this is the reality, that the way we are brought up, the way our taste buds are developed, the way our society is, the way we get food everywhere, it is a great challenge to be able to restrict the salt intake. But with knowledge, we should be able to do this. So what should we do? It's a big challenge. I think uh, it seems to be almost like an impossible thing to do in some time to happen. But if we keep working hard, it can happen. And that would need a multi-branched effort. We'll need effort at the government level. We'll need effort from food producers. We'll need effort from uh, food retailers. We'll need effort from celebrities. We'll need efforts from the media. Of course, we need to learn in order to make this a possibility. And if we do this, we have been hearing that we can save several lives. And if we remain healthy, we'll also be able to maintain our organs healthy, so that when we are gone, our organs can be used to benefit thousands of people with end-stage organ disease. And if we benefit them, we'll be able to save even more lives and help Dr. Amit Shah in his effort to save many lives. So this is the message from our foundation. Don't take your organs to heaven, for God knows they are needed here. So if we maintain our organs healthy, we will be able to leave healthy organs here for the benefit of many people and save their lives. And then someone in an audience like this said, what happens if we don't go to the heaven? So our foundation made another message that organ donation is the bridge to heaven. So you will definitely go to heaven. So thank you for this opportunity, RC. It has made, certainly, it has made me learn the subject, a lot of beneficial effects, and we all are going to work hard to spread this message in the society. And also, all of us, it's our moral duty to sign an organ donor card so that when we are gone, our healthy organs can save even more lives. Thank you.